they gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous. So all of these things that they are setting in place is against the quote-unquote children of Israel, especially the righteous ones. But even if you're wicked, it's against you as well. Mm -hmm. Read. And condemn the innocent blood. And condemn the innocent blood. So these two scripts make it crystal clear. Read it again. Read that them two scripts again. The book of Psalms, chapter 94, verse 20 and 21. Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with you, which frame mischief by a law? Again, which frames mischief by a law. That's up to do all. Nobody's going to be able to have guns except the police and the military. You have the right to bear arms. Read. They gather themselves together against the soul of the righteous and condemn the innocent blood. And condemn the innocent blood, meaning people who don't have absolutely nothing to do with none of this madness. All what you're doing is against the righteous and the people who keep the commandments. That's who it says that the dragon will be mad with those that Follow the Most High, keep His commandments, and the testimony of Hamasiah. Let's let's go. Let's get a couple more. Again, this brother spoke directly against the prophets, the law, and Hamasiah. Get um Isaiah eight and twenty. The Book of Isaiah, chapter eight and verse twenty, to the law. And to the testimony. So where did we find the law at? We find the law back where Moses is at. And where did we find the last testimony at? In the new. In the new with Hamashiach. So read that again. To the law and to the testimony. If they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. It is because there is no light in him. That is one of the most powerful verses in the entire book. You can line anybody up if you ask them a couple of questions and you hear them say something like, man, I, I'm not under no law. And all of this madness, you can read that verse to them. It's no light in them. Like I told y'all, remember this verse from, from John. John 9 and 5. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. I go away, but I'm with you always. The Messiah ain't in that dude. Even though he's, he quote-unquote used the pagan name and stuff, he's still supposed to be talking about the Messiah of the book. There is no light in this dude. What was one of the big promises that he campaigned on in his first thing about the troops? I'm going to bring home all of the troops. I'm going to bring home all of the troops. But guess what? He ain't brought them home. He sent more. He increased them. He sent more over there to get slaughtered and killed and to kill innocent women and children. Exactly. So let's go to Psalms 55 and 21. But this is the blindness of the heart that will lead you into madness and have you doing something that you completely know you shouldn't be doing. Like voting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Change you can't believe in. <laughs> this is not a red states or blue states. This is not... A white America, a black America, a Chinese America, an African American, a this American, all of these Americans. It is the United States of America. Ah, all that smooth words. Read. The words of his mouth was smoother than butter. So his words is smoother than butter. Read on. But war was in his heart. But war was in his heart. So war is in his brother's heart because he told you, I'm bringing the troops home. But he didn't bring them home. He sent more people out to fight. Mm -hmm. And he got a so-called civilian army. 
Same as who had a civilian army? Hitler had a civilian army. Y'all ain't doing y'all homework. Y'all ain't doing y'all history. Wow, shucks. Read. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. <laughs> yet were they drawn swords. So again, when y'all looking at this man, a lot of these sisters think that this brother is handsome, <laughs> so they can't get past that. Then he got this smooth speech. So a lot of y'all can't get past that. And that's where you fall in. It's a blindness of heart. And you're going to get yourself into a lot of trouble doing that. Let's finish this out with this last script. Go to um, Romans 16 and 18. The book of Romans, chapter 16 and verse 18. For they that are such serve not our master, Yahushua, Hamashiach. So these people serve not the Messiah. They don't serve him, even though they say it. That's why it says, these people draw near me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We. But their own belly. But their own what? But their own belly. But their own belly. Read. And by good words. By what? By good words. By good words. I'm going to put you in health care. I'm going to do this and I'm going to give you this. And I'm going to give you free phones, 250 minutes so I can track you. <laughs> <laughs> so I can keep tabs on you. And let you have free, 250 free texts. So you can... <laughs> Drive the car and text at the same time and kill your foolish self. Read. And by good words. And by what? And by good words. And by good words. I'm going to suck up jobs. Read. And fair speeches. And fair speeches. This is what dude is known for. His speeches have massive crowds. But it was another guy with a little mustache. Used to have the good speeches and... And thousands of people at his things as well. Mm -hmm. Read. Deceive the hearts of the simple. Deceive the hearts of the simple. See that? When you get blindness of heart, you fall off into madness. Doing things that you know you don't got no business doing. Like again, like what I say, voting. <laughs> you know it's a scam. You know it's a sham. You know it's nothing, but that same technique they use, they've been using it from the beginning. They did the same garbage with our pastors back in the day. So we're going to read some of this right here. Let's see. Yeah, you can read that title to them and everything. This is the book, The Negro Church in America, by Mr. E. Franklin Frazier and C. E. Lincoln. This is one of the best books that I have bought that show you some flat out truth. One of the best ones that I done bought was 20 bucks. I didn't want to pay it at first, but I'm really glad I did. So we're gonna start from right there. Read. Since all forms of organized social effort were forbidden among the slaves and in the absence of an established priesthood, the Negro preacher played the important role in the invisible institution of the church among the slaves. So the same thing goes for your politician. He couldn't serve it while it really meant something. Read. The Negro preacher was called Exactly, he was called, read. To his office, and through his personal qualities, achieved a position of dominance. The call was supposed to have come through some religious experience, which indicated that the Most High had chosen him as a spiritual leader. So don't you touch my, don't y'all touch my anointed. Don't you say nothing about him. These guys ain't anointed. Read. According to Frederick Douglass, the abolitionist orator, 
who escaped from slavery. The preacher was one of the slave notabilities. The preacher to whom Douglas refers seems to have achieved his authority because of personal qualities. This authority was given greater weight when the slave who had been called to preach was licensed. So when he got a license, so when the white man said it was okay to be a politician, so when the white man puts his money behind you, all of a sudden, it's real now. He got to be the truth. Even white people love him. The Jewish people is giving him money for his campaigns. He got to be the truth. Read. This authority was given greater weight when the slave who had been called to preach was licensed by the Methodist or Baptist church. One qualification which the Negro preacher among the slave needed to possess was some knowledge of the Bible. So all you got to do is have some knowledge of the Bible or the Constitution and you can just ramble off and say big numbers, we're going to cut the deficit by $30 trillion and do this and uh, this sounds good. Read. However imperfect or distorted his knowledge of the Bible might be, <laughs> the fact that he was acquainted with the source of sacred knowledge, which was in a sense the exclusive possession of his white masters, gave him prestige and matters concerning the supernatural and religious among his fellow slaves. Of his what kind of masters? His white masters. Of his white masters. Again, we see because these because the white people back this guy, everybody follows along just because they are following. Read. His knowledge of the, of the sacred scriptures had to be combined with an ability to speak and communicate his special knowledge to the slaves. What is Obama known for? His fair speeches. His fair speeches. It's the same thing. Read. As one white minister pointed out, the religious instruction of the slaves required preaching rather than instruction. So they need to be preached at. They need to be hollered at. And, mm -hmm, I'm a, uh, 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 uh. They need all of that. Don't explain the scriptures like we do. <laughs> That's too boring for them. They need a show. They need mimes in the church acting a fool. Mm -hmm. Read. Preaching meant dramatizing the stories of the Bible and the way of the Most High to man. And Noah built the ark. Mm -hmm. Foolishness. Read. These slave preachers were noted for the imagery, imagery of their sermons. One slave preacher, John Jasper, achieved distinction, according to his biographer, because of his lofty dignity, which was combined with his fiery and thrilling oratory, despite <laughs> his temptuous and ungrammatical eloquence. <laughs> ungrammatical eloquence. Fiery sermons. Dude's speeches be fiery. He had the people fired up. Read. Another qualification which the slave preacher must possess was the ability to sing. Was the ability to sing. And we know what music does. It soothes the savage beast. Whatever music is on, it controls the mood of the people. So when you see all these sound bites and the music playing and they got Obama and his little great speeches and it sounds so good that you fired up. Out, get out to the polls and vote. Vote or die. Got Jay-Z and Puffy and uh, Russell Simmons and Mary J. Blige and all of these people, even Nas, talking about voting. <laughs> you can bet your bottom dollar they've been sold over to the system. They are to keep you sleep. So the parallel with these pastors, they did the same exact thing with the politicians. Same exact thing. So, with that, man, we pray that the Most High open everybody's eyes and that we all can see. Salome.